uh, this breaking news on Terry Stotts. I, I'm assuming there was a big fight. Yeah, by the way, everybody, welcome to Light Years. Special guest, Dave Dufour, coming through. Dave, how you been? Not bad. Not bad at all. How about you guys? You know, the excited. Last night's Warriors game was the level of excitement I needed to be like, all right, ready for the regular season to start. It's time. You got you got Steph going supernova, and I'm like, I'm ready for the season to start. Um, but back Not to your, back back to what we were talking about before yeah. we started. Shams just dropped a story, and I'm skimming it. There's nothing really direct here. It's it seems like there was some sort of disagreement in the coach's room. Um, some some stuff alluding to the fact that Stotts and Griffin don't see eye to eye, but no. Uh, no specifics just yet. Uh, Griffin says, you're going to have to ask Terry. He's a great coach. I really enjoyed getting to know him. Terrific person. It was his decision. I wish him the best. So I'm sure we'll find out the specifics. Uh, I think your your gut take is probably the correct one. If you were a first-year coach, would you want a guy on your bench with the experience that Terry Stotts has? Um, and with the relationship – you know that he has with now your second best player who you just happened to get a few weeks ago. I think that that, you know, like just knowing coaching politics, that could be part of it. But also Adrian Griffin's the head coach, man. And and if you're the assistant, you kind of got to fall in line. So um, it could just be a matter of that. And and Adrian Griffin felt like he wasn't going to fall in line. And, uh, but it also could be a little bit of, I have to worry about my job potentially. What if things, you know, what if they start out of the gate a little slow? Oh, that's exactly. Do I have to, exactly. do I have to look over my shoulder? Because this guy is here who, you know, I mean, Terry Stotts is a good coach. Uh, he, he had a, a really good run in Portland. So um, I don't know. I don't operate that way. I like to have good people he's, around me all the time. So I, I don't <laughs> I don't naturally think that. Um, he's, he's quote unquote overqualified to be an assistant. Yeah. So. Yeah. The Warriors have this problem. I mean, it's actually, no, it's not a problem. Sorry. The Warriors have this Probably one of Steve's biggest strengths is being able to manage this sort of thing. That's exactly what I meant to say is is that he has Kenny Atkinson and he's had Luke Walton, though Luke Walton, maybe not a great coach, but he's had guys, Alvin Gentry on his bench who are Mike Brown, pretty old over Mike Brown, certainly really good coach now. Experienced coach in Steve Kerr versus guy first year on the job. Okay. So like, it's a little bit different, right? Like Steve Kerr has, uh, probably just built up enough equity in the league that he feels comfortable no matter what. Even coming in as a first-time head coach when he first came in there, he probably felt relatively comfortable. Whereas Adrian Griffin, I mean, it guy, he was he was on the list of uh, assistants interviewing a few years ago, had whatever happened. Yeah, I, I don't even, for his moment, quote unquote, I don't even yeah. know what happened uh, a couple years ago because I, I think he had like some off the, off the court, obviously, issues of some sort. And then you have to wait for that news cycle to go away. And now he finally gets his chance. And it's with the team that's probably the favorites in the East because they have the best player in the East. And then they added Damian Lillard. You think they're the favorites in the East? Yeah, they ought to be. Old Goy over here thinks it's the Celtics. You know, he's all locked I'm, in. On, every, on every, year, every year they disappoint me in the spring. And then every year in the fall, I'm ready to say it's going to be different. Jalen's getting a left hand. We're good. <laughs> getting a left hand. Yeah. At some point this season, it's, it's not, it doesn't have it yet. I do. It's I off, mean, actually. if I was to make a case for why I'm worried about the Bucks, this is exactly the type of reason. They obviously have the, the best talent of any team in the East. Maybe not the deepest talent, but like the combo of Dame and Giannis is the best, like one, two punch you're going to see in the East. Right. Uh, Brooke Lopez is an excellent player. Chris Middleton, if he's healthy. Very good player, you know. At, beyond that, they can piecemeal it. They have some guys who are okay. Mm-hmm. Um, didn't know about a first year head coach. This seems like a situation where you need a veteran coach because Dame's kind of been used to playing martyr ball. Like at no point has Dame had to consider anything other than go get score forty. Right. And it's trendy to say Drew's underrated, but like drew is underrated the big part of why their drop coverage worked on defense you know like all that stuff ties in and they just they seem to be like one of those teams that would look better on paper than in reality i say that Giannis will probably score 50 on opening night um 
and and yeah, it's just it's like this coaching, you know, this is kind of I don't know, man. They feel like the type of team that an Eric Spolstra Heat team could could exploit yet again. Let me get every year, every season, all the time. What maybe, the West- maybe maybe I'm I'm moving heavily into the coaching matters more than we give it credit for category, but that's kind of where I'm at right now. Joe Mazzulla was a first year head coach last year, and uh, it worked out okay for the Celtics. But he did pretty okay, right? Like, um, I, I well, don't worry. I'm too sure much they about feel it. very it disappointed is. by the end. It of it is, too. Yeah, I mean, it it worked out mostly fine. I mean, it, they didn't make the finals, but you know, they they were in the mix in their regular season. They were they were pretty strong. Uh, I think uh, the Celtics are like, if their ceiling hits, then then sure. I just don't believe in their ceiling. I think that Al Horford is old. Christoph Porzingis, he had, you know, he just had this nice year in Washington, but do you trust him to be able to play 90 to 100 games? Or, you know, maybe it's maybe it's closer to 85, 90 than 90 to 100, but do you trust him to be able to do that stuff? I do like some of the stuff that I've seen out of them defensively so far in the, well, I guess to this point in the preseason. And Drew Holiday is a really good fit, but offense matters so much, so much. Um, and when you look at boss or at Milwaukee, I just think they're going to score too much. Like they, they, they should be an easy number one seed. The consistency of their offense, I think will carry them through the regular season. Now w- what they're going to defend like come playoff time. I worry about Brooke being a little older, you know, can they, can they mix it up enough? Yeah. I don't know. It, I think ultimately yeah, it, it comes down to how much, uh, can they play Giannis at the five? To a certain degree, because they're going to need to match up like when they face Boston, they're going to need to go a little bit smaller, I think, because Porzingis is probably going to be the five in a lot of those crunch time matchups. But it's regular season wise, man, they should they should yeah. eat wins. I mean, I think both I think both those teams are going to eat wins in the regular season. Mm-hmm. Like, we're we're obviously talking about through the context of both these teams are championship or bust. Neither of them are right. going to be thrilled with like a spirited seven game series in the second round. How, how many teams of the NBA are championship or bust right now? How many teams? That's a good question. Well, championship or bust, meaning we actually think they could win a championship. No, like the expectations too? of the team are so, so. I mean, there's only three teams well, that should have a realistic expectation coming into the season of winning a let me, let me, let me rephrase oh. Andy's question. Teams who will be internally disappointed. Got you. Like they believe they are contenders. Like you may not buy the Warriors a contender, but they're definitely they or they will are. not be happy right. if they're not. Maybe there's six. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say two in the East, four in the West. Yeah, that is six. That that is six. I mean, but like you're not counting the Clippers. I'm guessing. No, I'm, I am. The Clippers not. should so be could, in that. Right. As far as I'm concerned, they should be in that category. You know, they should I be disappointed. The they haven't. They haven't gotten a, a title yet. They don't seem disappointed with themselves when they never get that out is, of the, you know, the West. That's I, and Maybe it's being mad at yourself. You, you are correct. For a team with that many veterans who've accomplished that much, like there's no glory in like, you know, another second round appearance for those guys. No. Um, you know, Memphis is kind of lucky there. They were maybe a little early to, to sure. one of those top seeds. So there's no pressure there. And plus they're going to have a, a weird season this year anyway that a lot of people are chalking up as a I I disagree man I think this is going to be Desmond Bain all-star candidate uh, all season long and it's going to then I get to keep saying man if only the Warriors had taken Desmond Bain at number two like I said you know have you watched Moses Moody in preseason yeah I mean I I wish he was playing more but um he didn't play much last night okay welcome to light years podcast (laughs) I mean you can see where he's gonna fit you know, perfectly. And and there's there's just a more clear path to minutes sure. for him. Like DiVincenzo's not there. Obviously, Iguodala no longer there. I mean, they just got they, they need him a mm-hmm. lot more. So I, you know, I was texting with a buddy of mine who's a Warriors fan, and he he seems to think that Moody's gonna kind of get jerked around a little bit again this year. I was like, No, they just can't. They don't have the guys to do it. So you know, I well, think it's going to be a big. We didn't think they had the guys to do it last year, but but they Anthony figured Lamb it found a way. <laughs> so, so it's like I, you're both correct. In theory, there's there should be 15 to 25 minutes a game off the bench there for him, mm-hmm. um, on the high end when guys rest, I assume. Uh, but I don't know if Steve doesn't like what he's seeing. You know, who do they got on two way now? Uh, Jerome Robinson. 
throw no, 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 no. We no, can't no. Do You're going to see some Rudy Gay out there, though. Believe you that. There's going to be gonna too, probably Rudy too Gay much Rudy there. Gay. Oh, there will be too much. You know, there will be, and I love Sarge, but there will be, like last night, too much Sarge sometimes, where it's just like, should he be out there right now? But again, Dre Malls, Hart Looney's there, whatever, preseason game, right? But like, there are going to be times, I think. That was season. definitely, that was definitely Steve. Let's see. Let's see how he holds up if we play him more. And preseason confirmed what we expected. Nice 15 minutes yeah, for him. Eight, yeah, 15, 18 is, is – I love it. <laughs> that I fit, love see, him. but the difference between 15 and 18 minutes is where Steve Kerr always slips up. That's the problem, <laughs> That's right? Come playoff That's time, it's going to be, man, if Sarge can give us 12 minutes and then he's playing 20. Yeah. But for some reason, it never goes that way with Kevon Looney. It's never – let's err on the side of too much Looney and just hope it works out. It's always, oh, we're going to do less, and it never works out. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was that was we had Looney on the pod. Uh, I know I'm so ago, disappointed. And... I can't believe you guys didn't ask me to come. <laughs> hang and out. his favorite his favorite point was passive aggressively being like, "Yeah, I mean, everyone's always saying we need another big, but they only play me 20, 25 minutes. Maybe I should play more." <laughs> right, that was pretty good. That was true. Right. I mean, it was true. I mean, it's true. Plays all 20, 82 games, and he only plays 20, only twenty five minutes a game, and. He's looking as, as spry as ever, and, and then he's talking about his playmaking getting better, and I'm just like, man, this guy is this guy's awesome. He's hey, fast. listen, man, bring I just want to. What does it look midi. like? What does it look like if he has a green light? You know what I mean? Let's just what. Let's give him like 18 shots a tape. game. Yeah, I, I want to see what happens. I mean, the thing is, it's not like the guy doesn't have touch. Get him yeah. some more touches. No, that's what Chris Paul is there for. Speaking of, yeah, gotta come off the bench. <laughs> our guy, our guy. Our guy, Chris Paul, you know, best plus minus in the game last night, by the way. Oh, my God. You did, you really, did you really just – oh, my <laughs> The God. propaganda. Preseason oh plus God. minus. We are back. The text I got last night from <laughs> Sam is hilarious is because you know, we've been talking about Chris Paul for years. I'm a converted Chris Paul fan. Love him. Don't know what I was missing all this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, look. We all assumed he was going to come off the bench, right? Or we all yeah. assumed that was the plan. How they were going to get there was, you know, question of politics. Like, you know, he is an accomplished player. Feels like they're getting there pretty comfortably. Um, and I think my big takeaway watching him in preseason, I have two. We'll start with the first one. The vibes are back. They definitely feel like the Warriors, you know? Now, will those vibes be there if they stumble on a on a losing streak at the beginning of the season? We'll see. But they do feel like a quintessential Warriors team where they're bought into each other. They're kind of having fun playing together. Uh, basically, what we're used to seeing from them and the opposite of what we saw last year. Last year, they had the worst vibes in the league. I don't think we need to break down why that happened and how that happened, but it definitely didn't feel like watching the Warriors when you watched them last year, right? I mean, I, I think I agree with that. The joy mm -hmm. wasn't really there. It looked no. like work for a lot of guys. And this is sort of, this is like the Chris Paul MO, right? You get this mm -hmm. year and maybe if, I mean, I, I doubt he'd be back for a second year, but you normally get two years of, of Chris Paul with mostly good vibes, at least outwardly. So I, I fully expected these adults to come together and everybody be fine. Chris Paul is a veteran and at the end of his career, it has to have a little bit of self-awareness about the situation he's walking into. So I didn't expect any issue. I think Chris Paul's big thing. And, and it seems like this has played out with the front office too, is he just wanted to know, Hey, are you going to just deal me or am I here? And, and I don't begrudge him for, for caring about that. I mean, obviously he's getting paid a lot of money, but I think that once they said, hey, you're here, and seems like they mean it, um, the, the vibe shifted, right? Like we then we started seeing, you know, they all did this workout together. Um, obviously, they've looked, I think they've looked great in the preseason. And you can see where Chris Paul is sort of being told by the coaching staff to just be Chris Paul yeah. uh, when, when those guys aren't on the court. I think that's super important because, you know, the, the, the theory behind Jordan Poole and James Wiseman to start last season was to get uh, Jordan Poole and Wiseman going and pick and roll. And it was a great way for guys to, you know, you can Ugh. steal some rest. You can have starters out there with those guys and they would generate not, looks, not right? Played out. And this year, now you've got Chris Paul and Jonathan Kuminga yep. potentially. And 
Trace oh my Jackson God, Davis. Trace Jackson Davis. Who I love him. Woo! Do you see I that? Box out? Even through, all I needed to see was out. one game. He had all a great box one out game. on one end, and they yep. came down and they got him the dunk on he the other end. So. You can even yeah, throw you can, can, can throw Sarge in there. Good pick Sarge. and roll, pick Absolutely. and pop player, Just, but also a ball mover, right? So, yeah. so you could have a scenario where it's Chris Paul and Kuminga and Sarge, and then you throw Clay and Wiggins out there, and Clay and Wiggins don't have to do much on offense. They can kind of, you know, they can steal minutes to a certain degree, kind of spacing up around pick and rolls. Right. And, and I think that that's what they wanted to do last year. That way you could stagger. Cardio. Yeah. Exactly. You could stagger your guys a little bit while still having productive players on the court. You know, so the, the secret to shrinking your rotation down when you get to like playoff time and you want to play eight guys is you got to find ways. LeBron has been amazing at this, right? He can right. play 42 minutes, but out of those 42, how much is he actually having to work hard? He chooses his spots. I mean, and I think we can, now they've got we that. to take it back. We can even take it back like the Warriors dealt with Sean Livingston. Like, right. you know, they'd run the they'd run their offense, and then second unit would come in. It's like let's slow this down. Let's, let's get it post to up Livingston. Yeah, let's just you know turn this these five minutes into a what like ten possessions each side type of game. Get mm-hmm. it going slow. And boom, we're good. Yeah, you're just basically treading water until Steph and Draymond get back in the game. Yeah. So, uh, so I mean, I've I've listened to you talk. I know you feel they're a little too small. I also think everyone will admit that's not exactly a hot take. No. It's a fair, it's a fair, it's a fair concern about this team. We haven't seen Draymond play in preseason, but, which obviously will be impactful for their defense. Um, but they are going to kind of have to be a team who outworks you in different ways because they're going to be undersized in most matchups. Um, my big take watching them last night was – they need Steve Kerr to be more like Eric Spolstra. And by that, I mean, I don't think he has a consistent closing lineup. I think there's going to be games you close with Chris Paul and go small. There's going to be games, maybe Clay doesn't close. There's going to be games, maybe Draymond doesn't close because of a matchup thing. They have seven or eight good players. They really only have one amazing player. And everything else is just kind of like, is this going to be a game we go, you know, with the big lineup, Clay Wiggins, Draymond Looney down the stretch, or is this going to be a game where it's like Chris Paul and Steph and maybe Kaminga and Wiggins on the wings athletes or something like that? And that's that's something I associate with Spolster more than anyone um, in some ways because he just hasn't been given the best rosters for an extended period. But that, now. That's, that's where the Warriors are at. Yeah, but the other part of it is like Steve's, Steve's traditionally been kind of a trust my guys type of coach and – you know, I'm curious to see. It sounds like he wants to do more more active coaching like this. I just I just need to see it. I just the players need to be bought in because I, right. I'm with you. Because uh, my take is actually pretty. It, it actually leads up to your take. Is uh, some of these guys look real slow, real slow. Chris Paul looks real slow. Clay looks real slow. <laughs> yeah, it's I don't, preseason, I, man. It's I'm preseason. just I don't. Hey, I could just go off what I see. You know what I mean? They're, they're, Chris is 38, 39. Clay is, you know, you know how cooked he looked at the end of last season. I can only go off what I see. Steph looks amazing. Camille yeah. looks amazing. GP2 Wig Wiggins looks, whew, he's ready to go. But man, some of those guys that you are used to being in closing lineups, Clay and CP2, I'm talking specifically, they look slow as hell. So I think, to, to Sam's point, some nights, some nights, Kaminga's got to close. Right, Kaminga's you know got to close. GPT's got to close some nights. You can't have Clay out there some nights. Hell, you maybe you can't have Draymond out there some nights. And I think the problem is how are you going to get those guys to buy it? It sounds like CP3 spotted, which is pretty cool. Like he he's bought into not to coming off the bench. But man, what happens in Game Ten when this team's you know six and four? They kind of need a big win, and all of a sudden you know Clay needs to sit because he's just. You know, he's three for 15 and he won't stop shooting. Third night. Right. Third game in four nights. He's right. slow. He's dragging. You're like, let's just, let's get you to 20 minutes tonight. And you know, that sort of thing. Yep. I do think if, if it's going to work, I think it has to start happening early in the season because if you give clay 50 games, and I don't want to pick on him. You could say Chris Paul, it applies to like sure. half the roster really. Draymond. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Give him 50 games to figure it out. And then you start doing that stuff. Like you run other risks. Um, but that's what I'm kind of curious about because that's the message we're getting out of them. I think they do have the luxury now, though, of they can go defense heavy or they can go offense heavy. Sure. And they can mix that up quite a bit because if it allows them to go defense heavy but play Chris Paul, you know, it, you still 
have a certain amount of like, you know, that point guard on the court when you need to just run a pick and roll. And, and you're going to be doing that with Steph Curry out there too, playing off the ball. I, I think that the lineup flexibility that they're afforded, a lot of this depends on Kuminga, right? Like can Kuminga, number one, can will Kerr trust him? Number two, can Kuminga live up to, to the expectations of him, which is to play both ways, to be a, a hard-nosed scorer who gets to the line, but also – a defensive kind of wing stopper slash help side rim protector, right? Like, can he do those things? I think, I think he will be able to. And there are scenarios in which like clay Thompson's not closing games because he's not athletic enough. And it's Kuminga that's out there because you just, we need a guy we can throw at these guys and, yeah. and he's going to be one of those. Steph and Paul because decision-making shooting. Yeah. 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 I, see it. I see it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's just about like, so many the matchup though. really is so what, what we're coming down to. Well, there'll if be they're plenty willing to, though, this yeah. team has, I would, I would argue that the Warriors more than anybody in recent memory have been like slaves to their rotation. You yes. know, it's a big deal when they change up. Oh, Steph Curry is going to play the whole first quarter or is he, you know what I mean? Like it's a big, we make this big deal out of it because they really, you know, they've, they've drilled this into our head. Steph Curry. Absolutely. Look, the world will explode if Steph Curry comes in the game before the six-minute mark of the fourth quarter. Oh, no, well, then it might. It might. But this is this is what I'm saying. So a coaching staff and players who have been so kind of territorial and rigid about this, this rotation, are they willing to say, hey, coach us up. Let us know, you know, tell us who you need. We're all in. You know, I, I think that there's a little bit of that at play too. Which is partly – you watch these LeBron teams in the postseason and you always, or even like you watch LeBron teams overall in entirety of a season where they just totally change up a team, every trade deadline. I'm not saying like that's the perfect way to do something, but the Warriors have always been the exact opposite. Now they all got to four championships in different ways, but they have the same destination. Um, but now, by the way, did you see the after the game last night? The, it's the drive for five. That's what they're naming it. The drive for five. That's what a uh, fit says as the broadcast ended. So, uh, so anyway, the it feels like the Warriors could adopt some of LeBron's style of, hey man, we're just gonna have to make some changes every other game or every other week, and 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 if a st- if the closing lineup is gonna have to be, and I find it interesting, you said if it's Steph CP three, and then you if Kaminga's rebounding with Wiggins and Draymond, like that's, like I could see that closing a lot of games. A lot of games, um, and so on and so on with some of the other guys on this team. I do want to just say something about the being small thing. It, it's not that they can't do it. It's that it's harder. It, yeah. it, it really is. It's not that Draymond can't can't be your best big on the court for 82 We've seen games. seen him do it many times. It's just yeah. hard, yeah. and you need to make it easier on him. This is why you, you know, bringing in size is something that, you know, it, it's more like if they had Andre Drummond coming off the bench to play eight minutes – 10 minutes just to to ease the burden a little bit i think it would go away that's what i've always everybody is like every time Draymond closed the game at the five and he and he does well everyone's like this is why they don't need a big no shit we can't do it everyone fucking knows you can't do it in mid-november you can't do it for an entire fourth quarter the goons are always going off about this in the light years discord it's so funny how the warriors went from carrying six bigs for no reason the you know the Zaza, the McAdoo, like all those guys. And now it's like the complete opposite. It's like, all right, Looney, no backup, you know? So somewhere in the middle would be ideal. Maybe they have a trace. Just a normal basketball team. What if it was just a normal (laughs) roster? Like, I, I just, it's not you mean, like, you mean like three him, centers, carry yeah, three centers, not two six or, three, or one, you know, two or three, <laughs> two and a tweener, something like that. You know, yeah. like, they have two centers, they have two centers, and and Trace Jackson Davis is not even seven feet tall. So they, they really, I mean, is Looney seven feet tall? They don't have a guy on their team that's seven feet tall. Well, you that's okay. I, mean? I think, I think the difference between six, ten, and seven feet is negligible. Yeah. Looney, Looney plays like a seven footer. That's facts. true. That's facts. Sabonis, so like, what, like Christian about. Wood, yeah, like Christian yeah. Wood is he, right? Like he, that guy's a three. Right? <laughs> that guy's a three. Yeah, he plays I mean, like I a do six, think six guy. Yeah. To you guys' point, Trace Jackson Davis. That's that was one of the exciting things about last night. He does look like he can give you regular season minutes, and awesome. if he can give you minutes, you know that's that's a little less wear and tear on Draymond. You know, Saric mm-hmm. absolutely is going to be able to give you minutes. You know, he's they'll probably only use him at the five, but. But still, that's another. I don't know. That's another I, so, listen, with Sarge's uh, at least theoretical shooting and his passing, 
I could see him playing some next to Looney here and there. Again, man, they like he'll oh, definitely play next to Draymond. All, all we've got to do this is for for this team. It's going to be about you know building up new chemistry with these with these new pieces. It's Kuminga. It's Chris Paul. It's seeing if Moody's going to give you anything, uh, and then it's going to be trying to win forty eight to fifty games and get to the playoffs. Yeah. So, however they get there, I, I do think that they're they now have more lineup flexibility than than they've had in the last couple of seasons, just by adding Saric and by having another competent ball handler out there who can set people up in Chris Paul. So, I mean, I I like this team a lot better than I liked last year's team coming into this season. Yeah. I think if I'm to take the Warriors out of it, the Nuggets and the Lakers are the two favorites in the West. You don't you don't put Phoenix Suns. up there? No, sorry. I mean, I don't. The, the issue is defense for them, right? They're going to score. Correct. They're going to score like crazy. They're going to hit shots that um, other teams can't rely on. But how are they going to play any defense – whatsoever i, I that I just, like, is yes they're Vo- better frank than the- vogel's coach of the year if they win 53 games i think you know if they're like the three seed and they win 52 games i, I like he's the best coach in the league like he, that means they feels actually like, play feels like they have to at least from from i mean they, they've got three guys and then after that who, who's their fourth best player can you guys theory, can you guys name can you guys name it, their fourth best it, player is it nurk utah <laughs> it's not utah eric gordon it, it could be Eric Gordon, yeah. but I think it's I think it's Nurkic. But it's like Eric Gordon is just some. They don't need anything that Eric Gordon does well. None of it. They right. don't need more shooting. They don't need their role players to have more shooting. They don't like Eric Gordon is not a very good defender anymore at this stage of his career. Like uh, it's such a weird team. I actually can't. The more I think about it, I can't tell if I'm in on the Suns or out on the Suns. I feel like I have to watch three games or something, <laughs> like three real games, and then I'm sure somebody will get hurt. But That's, but even then, just, they're not gonna. <laughs> You it really think no they're going to beat some? They're going to go through the West on fifteen footers, right? Right, like, like just fifteen the foot jumpers. It's going to be like it. last year. Yeah. It'll be like last year. I mean, I, you're adding Bradley Beal, and there's this this idea that oh, he's going to be running off screens and playing off the ball. Okay, but look at the how these guys shoot off the dribble so much. Now, is he going to create space? I don't know. But also, how much better can the offense even be? Right, not exactly. Like I was. I told Andy this earlier in the in the off season. It was clear that they were going to move Aiton, and I oh, yeah. thought, you know, if they Dominating. can, if they can flip Aiton for a couple like goons, like a couple glue guys, like the PJ Tupper types, the the guys who do the stuff that you know Booker and KD don't really do, then I'm like, damn, they could be terrifying. And instead, they flipped him for Nurkic, and I'm just like. Yeah, I mean he's he's talented. He little. Certain... I mean, sure. The Phoenix Suns are a collection of incredible stars in the league, and then a bunch of guys who are like the tenth or eleventh guy from a bunch of teams and have been cut a lot. Um, Grayson like, Allen. Yeah, getting excited about Utah. It, I mean, he's a fine player, but he's been cut like by multiple teams, and and it gets traded all the time. Like you cannot. Like realistically, tell me that the the hopes of this franchise that is potentially going to just blow through the second apron in the, in the newly uh, minted collective bargaining agreement is just going to okay. This guy is going to be our fifth most important guy. No, no. I like they did not have a good summer because they didn't get I, like you said they didn't flip eight and then turn it into enough dudes. They've got some guys that everybody likes because we all spend too much time watching basketball, sure. too much time looking at memes, stuff like that. But like, <laughs> who do they have, man? Like, that's good. You know, beyond their top three, who do you trust on that team? Yeah, I think yeah. Eric Gordon Eric might Gordon. be the fourth guy, right? Like, that's it. So you're you're closing games with Eric Gordon and oh, I you know what? I can't wait. It's insane. I, I can't wait for Eric Gordon to ISO top of the key. And it's a close game, and and take a thirty Beal. footer. Oh, I cannot wait! Actually, now that I think about it, that's amazing. This is that's beautiful. You've got three guys. You could say three elite scorers, and then Eric Gordon taking the big shots. I, I, 
I'm excited. I mean, that kind of worked for the Rockets. Worked better than Harden took the big shot. <laughs> so that's gravity. Gravity. But, but but then again, these got the, their three stars aren't uh, James Harden down the stretch either. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I think we all Let's kind up. of agree on Phoenix. Where I mean, I'm gonna watch it. Right? I'm watching yeah. every game. But I'm watching every game. I'm not. I, I don't see it. Even if they like dominate the regular season, let's say they have three incredible offensive regular seasons for those like individually and they score, you know, let's say their offensive rating is, you know, top three in the league. That'll win them a lot of games in a regular season. But once it comes playoff time, I think they'll look pretty similar to, to last year. So, so you got the nuggets, you got the nuggets, Lakers, Warriors, Suns probably. In, yeah. In that that's, order. I mean, that's kind of my top four. Although the Clippers, I think, Stop, could obviously stop. if they're healthy stop. right like we got to say that if they're healthy i also there's such a there's such a theoretical team next to topic there's point. An, next topic if they're healthy, there's an if they're healthy tier right <laughs> and it's like the clippers that's good that's the good. pelicans um because like you know when zion's out there he's one of the 10 best players in the league he's just only out there 10% of the time. So of the what time. do you do? Um, it's, you know, it, it's a little there. bit tricky. Right. Yeah. But I think that the actual contenders are are just those four in the West. I mean, yeah. and I, the Warriors can beat any of those teams. I think the Nuggets are head and shoulders above everybody else uh, in the West. But, you know, things change. I do think, I do think a, uh, a fully enga- engaged Warriors team where the vibes are there and they're actually playing like the Warriors that we know is the worst matchup for Denver. They just, they just, they don't have any way to guard Steph. Now, no one has any way to guard Jokic, but they're going to end up in a lot of shootouts basically. And, you right. know, Steph versus Jokic, like it's, it's a coin flip, right? It's a coin of who's hotter down the stretch type of thing. Um, and whereas against the Lakers, like Lakers don't really have any outside shoot. We saw how that thing played out. Like great defensive team, but they can't keep up with the Nuggets. Yeah. I mean, uh, the Lakers are going to be interesting. Just like what their offense is going to look like. I actually think the Lakers are going to have a pretty good defense and, yeah. and that's going to get them through a lot. It's just how consistent can their offense be? I'm still just not convinced that Austin Reeves is like this, you know, third best player on a on a championship contender or whatever he's supposed to be uh so we'll we'll see how that team goes but you know what you're going to get mostly out of lebron i think at this point as long as he again as long as he stays healthy is the league just too old is that where we're at is all the players too the, old the, and, the best the players because i'm yes. constantly finding myself having to couch everything everything with well you know this guy's kind of old because that's so, the thing. Like Steph Curry is kind of old. I mean, who who are your who are the in their prime age stars? I mean, it's it's kind of just Giannis and and, and, uh, well, Giannis and Jokic. And Jokic. Yeah. But like, Giannis so I, Jokic, yeah. I I bitch about this every pod to Sam. It's they have to send their best players to Paris next year, and all those guys are going to be in their mid thirties. Those are the best American players. That that's it. Those are the best serious American players. Durant. KD, or excuse me, Durant, Steph, and LeBron. And those guys are just one one wrong step down the stairs away from missing a month of the season, man. We saw KD in warm don't put, slip. Don't put that juju out there. I know, but it's just, you know, to Dave's point, go down the list of the six teams that we think are the real teams. Or, you know, you got the, Lake, the Lakers, the Warriors, Steph, Suns, KD. Then you've got, right, then you've got Giannis and, and Jokic with the other two. And then and then you've got the Celtics. So, like, those are the aren't those the three guys that aren't the stars? It's Tatum, uh, Jokic, and Giannis. Those are like the in your prime superstars. Mm-hmm. And then everyone else is old guys if they can stay healthy. That's what everyone else is if they can stay healthy. I guess that's where the NBA is. That is kind of where we're at. Ian Rip Hamilton at the same. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, that is kind of where we're at right now. You know, we kind of buried the lead. We didn't pod after last night's game. Everyone listening to this saw the. Steph Curry game winner. I think we all agree, you know, best player in the NBA, blah, blah, blah. Jokic, whatever. I mean, overrated. I, Steph Curry is the best player of all time. I, I've been early and that. often with this. but So let me play um, this one clip from Gil's Arena, Gilbert Arenas, discussing Steph Curry or Allen Iverson. I thought it was good, and then we can, we can discuss. Who's harder to guard, Allen Iverson or Steph? 
This is an easy answer. Mm. Yeah, but you need the dramatic effect. To be honest, I wouldn't want to guard. Took the, too long. I've guarded AI. I don't want to guard Steph. Running around. Because he, like, because with AI, like, he had the ball, but if he gave it up, you know, <laughs> right, if he gave it up, you uh, yeah. <laughs> and when he gave it up, you're like, whoosh, thank you, Lord, Jesus. Steph, there's no, mm-hmm. there's ever no rest, right? He, he, he passed it. He's gone. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you really, it's like guarding AI and Rip Hamilton at the same time, mm-hmm. right? And that's, that, that's, you know, you ain't trying to So I don't, moving. I personally don't want to do that. That's a nightmare. Like, his rookie year, he did give me 20 something. And I had to switch off. Like, you know, I ain't guarding that one. Give me the Monte Ellis dude. Oh, <laughs> you the real fast guy. <laughs> Give me the real fast guy. I guard the real fast guy. Guard this. Yeah, I don't know. No. No. Yeah, no, Steph. Uh, that's funny. one. It's a great story. Just the Monte great reference story. at the end makes me very happy there. But, uh, but yeah, man. I mean, it's look. He's thirty five. And he's still doing this. Is it? Should we not just revel in it a little bit? Like it's preseason, There's... but. It, he doesn't look like he's slowing down at all. And if anything, it feels like because he's looks like he's not slowing down, it's hitting that like reverence from everyone who maybe was like, oh, he's good, but he's not as good as these guys. It's like, no, it's a decade later, he's potentially better than he was when he was 25. And it's it's just crazy. Smarter player for sure than he than he was at 25. Um better shooter, maybe. Just it, when you think about his repertoire, I, I think he's way less predictable as a shooter now. Like he shoots from every spot on the court, almost, almost literally. Um, yeah, that that question to me is such a is a no brainer, and I you right. know, I appreciate that Gill's got to do the thing where he makes it seem like it's a debate. But you know, Steph Curry is bigger than AI, stronger. I would argue faster, at least on the court. Um, uh, in, in doing functional basketball stuff. He does move off the ball, but he's got a a better handle than AI ever had when you consider how, how he is in traffic. AI's first step, maybe you give him that, but I still think Steph's first step is pretty crazy. Um, and, and then like, like uh, Gilbert said, once he gives up the ball, it's not like you get to rest. That's when things actually get worse. Because if he has the ball in his hands, he might just pull up and dot your eye and it's fine. He might drive to the basket. But once he gives the ball up, now you have to go into a full-on sprint. He's going to change direction three times. And then you're going to basically leave him with a wide-open shot. Last night, Steph uh, had the ball three feet behind the arc, uh, put his head down, made one head fake, took a dribble, stepped another foot and a half behind the arc, shot a three, down two. And uh, from above the break, by the way, and uh, the the shot had no chance of not going in. <laughs> it's just, it, it just, it, it it doesn't make any sense. And uh, you never get sick of it. I, I I'm pessimistic about the Warriors this season. I am never pessimistic about who Steph is. I thought it was also fun. They played him with Chris Paul down the stretch, and he played essentially the role Allen Iverson played, which is like a pure two running off a pin down. They ran him. Uh, off a pin down to get him isolated on one side of the that court was, as if he was like Kobe, which was yeah, really strange. Uh, I haven't seen that one in a while, but it's like, of course he can make it. Like you, you think he can't make a turnaround 18 footer or one-on-one. He probably can make it at a higher percentage that, than I mean, anyone ever. Insane that it, that, that was the shot. I've rarely ever seen him take that. No, they don't. It, it's, and it kind of, it kind of speaks to the fact like we all, we all acknowledge he's the greatest shooter of all time. But sometimes the wording of it downplays just the variety of things sure. you can do on a basketball court. Like yeah. the assumption is like free throw shooting or running off right. of screens. It's like, this no, like the- every angle and things that don't make sense, he does better than everyone. Yeah, this isn't Glenn Rice or something like that. Yeah. Like this is this is um this is a different thing. It's not even Mark Price, who Mark Price was a pretty good actual in-game shooter, too. Because what Steph does, I mean, again, he caused the evolution of the sport. Right. Um, you, you only have one guy do that, uh, the way that he has. So, uh, there's not really, I, I don't, I don't think there's any way to guard him, but I, I do like the idea of using him in, in new, in different ways. Now that you have another high level thinker and passer out on the court, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I think is going to come from Draymond and Chris Paul playing together for Steph, where you have these, you know, I mean, is Chris Paul 
maybe about to be the most high level connecting role player in recent NBA history. Do you know what I mean? Like he's clearly not a star on this team. He's not, he's not like one of your top three, not top four. His, yeah, his like, job like is Andre. to do what? Yeah. Right. Andre, Andre, yeah. And then, so then you got Steph Curry out there as, you know, one of the three or four best players still in the league um, active. And uh, yeah, I think this is going to, this is going to work out pretty well just because of that sort of stuff. So him getting new and unique touches always works well for the Warriors. It's the reason that they, that this whole thing has happened is because he was doing new and unique things along the way that allowed him to explore stuff. If, if Steph wasn't Steph, they never have this run, obviously. I also just think it's fun to watch. It's like, look, I'll never get tired of watching like the traditional motion offense, Draymond shoveling the ball to Steph or clay and like the tsunami it causes like best basketball to watch, but it is fun getting to see Steph do stuff that maybe he does. He hasn't done much in the past because they haven't had a point guard or they haven't right. had these sort of things just kind of adds to the, like, there's no weakness in his game. There's nothing he can't do. You know he what? Will. I'm yeah. Go just ahead. play him at the five. I just want to see it. Let's see what happens. I mean, if it's he- him, if it's him, Chris Paul, Pajemski, Corey Joseph, and GP2, who's the five? Is it, I, is I it think Pods? it's probably GP2. Yeah, it's probably GP2. But... That is an insane lineup, and I bet we see it this season. Stretch is, four, stretch four, thing. Steph Curry. Yeah, best stretch four we'll ever see. <laughs> I mean, how about the Steph, Steph, Chris Paul pick and roll where where Steph is the screener the pop, is going yeah. to be unguardable. Well, it's what Steph and KD. It's what Steph and KD ran like five times the, the three years they were together because Steph yeah. was the uh, KD was the worst screener ever, and and KD didn't really like like that play. But I think Chris Paul has bought in, so I'm with you on that. Um, we'll talk about their defense another time. We're not worried about that. Let's just talk about how <laughs> great they're going to be. I think I think their defense is going to be incredible. I think you know as long as Draymond isn't slowed down by this ankle, I think their defense is going to be excellent. Yeah. yeah, you know, and he's already practicing. I get the feeling that they're going to take an extra week because it's October, and you know, they should. Dave, appreciate you. Yeah, Always stopping by. Good to see you guys. Good to see you too. Have a good one. Take care. Bye, right, Dave.